The myth that young people can't buy a house because they're lazy or waste their money is busted. According to a new report by the Grattan Institute, young Australians are simply not as wealthy as their predecessors were three decades ago. This graph shows that older households, 65 years and older, have almost four times as much wealth as younger households, 34 years and younger, on average. This is compared to only two and a half times 30 years ago. Relative income and expenditure has also increased. When it comes to government benefits, older households are getting a lot more than they used to, increasing from about $17,000 30 years ago to about $28,000 per year now. Note, all these figures have been adjusted for inflation. Younger households are unsurprisingly the ones funding all of this. If you could conclude one thing from this graph, it would be that the tax and transfer system has become increasingly generous to older Australians, which leaves Millennials and Generation Z to carry the burden, threatening the sustainability of the so-called generational bargain. What is the generational bargain? It basically is an implicit contract between generations where working age families pay more in taxes than they receive in benefits. This helps support older Australians who are no longer in the workforce. The bargain is sustained by a sense of fairness and generosity between generations, with the goal, for most people, to leave the world a better place for future generations. Just a quick aside for those not hip with all the generational lingo, Gen Z, or Centennials as they are sometimes known, are the youngest generation aged under 24. Millennials are aged between 24 and 38. Generation X are between 39 and 54. Baby Boomers are aged 55 to 73, and the oldest generation is referred to as the traditionalists or the silent generation. Looking at this chart, we can see that the wealth gap between young and old is growing. Most of Australia's increase in wealth has gone to the older generations. The richest age bracket, 65 to 74 year olds, now has about $1.3 million in wealth, which is up from about $530,000 back in 1994 in real terms. They are significantly richer than they once were were. However, if you look at the younger generations, their gains have been modest at best, with the youngest generation having seen almost no improvement. Putting these figures into equivalised terms, that is, taking into account varying household size and composition, the results are equally gloomy. The net wealth of older Australians has grown much more than the younger generations. Most of the wealth growth has occurred in property and superannuation. Booming house prices has favoured long-term property owners, turning many of the older generation into unexpected millionaires. They didn't work hard to become millionaires, they just bought a cheap house three decades ago and held onto it. Consequently, we have a younger generation that are finding it increasingly difficult to buy a house, not because they're lazy or wasteful of their money, but because society has been set up that way. They just can't afford it. This graph shows that young people are unlikely to enjoy the same windfall gains in asset prices. People who own property or have a large super account will see greater wealth increases than those that just work full time. In other words, it doesn't matter how hard the younger generations work, they're constantly behind the eight ball. This chart shows that rich young Australians are faring okay, but other young people are going backwards, with the most disadvantaged group being the poorest young Australians who are losing wealth at a mighty rate. Do you notice that the poorest old people are doing very well indeed in terms of gains in household wealth? We can see here that the baby boomers won the demographic lottery, having a large number of young people supporting them in their retirement years, but the population in Australia is ageing. A typical 40-year-old today contributes much more towards the retirement of others through taxes than did his or her baby boomer predecessors. Unfortunately, Generation Z has already lost this lottery, with only half as many younger people there to support them when they eventually retire. They better hope that helper robots become a real thing. I could go on and on showing you more graphs to back up my point, but what's the point? You get the idea, right? Inequality in Australia is rife, and unfortunately we're letting richer, older Australians dictate where the wealth should go into their back pockets. But what can be done about it? Well, the report made a number of recommendations. The ones that would have the biggest impact include improving the efficiency of taxation, improve labour force participation and productivity, and make strategic investments in infrastructure. Housing affordability is also a big issue, but unfortunately it's a difficult political challenge. Rich people don't want house prices to go down. Age-based tax breaks could also be modified to help the situation, but again, it's a political challenge. Intergenerational transfers is also on the agenda, but good luck getting that passed in Parliament. So what are your thoughts? Is our generational bargain at breaking point? Do we really want young Australians to become poor Australians? 
I don't think so. So let's fix this mess. Thank you.